Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR3U1 video and in this video we are continuing chapter 7 on sequences and series and we will be covering section 7.4 on exploring recursive sequences. Here's the chapter outline and again um, you can find extra practice questions on the mid chapter review of chapter 7 on pages 455 to 457 which will also co cover um, the previous lessons we have done in chapter seven. So let's get to the lesson. It'll be probably a shorter lesson than usual because we don't have that much to cover in this particular lesson. Here's the success criteria for this lesson. We want to explore more patterns and character, uh, characteristics about recursive sequences. And we want to learn about the Fibonacci sequence and the Lucas sequence. So let's go over a couple of general facts about recursive sequences. So as we know from before, in a recursive sequence, the terms depend on one or more of the previous terms. We have seen how the previous term in sequences helps us solve for the next. But in this video, we will look into when two terms give us the next term in the sequence. So here it says when one or more previous terms are given. Um, but again, we've only looked at just one term and using that term to get the next term. In this video, we will look at two, but sometimes it could be three or four or more. The next fact is that two different sequences with the same relationship um, between consecutive terms have similar properties. So for example, if two arithmetic sequences both have a common difference of two, they will hold similar properties. And we will see this with the Fibonacci and Lucas sequences. But for example, if we have two and four and six and eight and 10, this sequence holds the same uh, properties as one, three, five, or, or even 20, 22, or even 19, 21, 23, 25, and 27. Even though these sequences may seem really different, they hold the same properties because their uh, common difference is two between each term. Okay. So what is the Fibonacci sequence? Well, it is a sequence that models many of the natural phenomena in the world. It models things like the number of petals, on many kinds of flowers. It models things like the number of spirals on a pineapple, which is pretty cool. Um, it models the number of spirals of seeds on a sunflower head and more. So it is very important and well-known. It is a very important and well-known sequence in mathematics. And the recursive formula for the Fibonacci sequence is T of N equals T of N minus one plus T of N minus two. So the term that we're trying to find is equal to the previous term plus the previous previous term. So the previous two terms, right? And T1 of the Fibonacci sequence is always one. And T1, T2 of the Fibonacci sequence is one as well. So T1 and T, the first two terms of the sequence is one. Um, and N has to be greater than two because of course we don't want to plug in two into here and get t of zero because it doesn't exist. If we take a look at the table to the right, representing a few terms of, its, of the Fibonacci sequence, we can indeed see that to get the next term in the sequence, we add the previous two numbers. So here is the placement in the sequence where the terms are at, and here's the actual terms. So the first two terms are one, like I said. The next term is two, which is one plus one. The next term three is three, three, which is one plus two. The next term is five, which is two plus three. The next term is eight, which is three plus five. The next term is 13, which is five plus eight and et cetera. And it goes on to infinity. Um, and we can see how the recursiveness of this formula works and how now, instead of relying on one of the previous terms to get the next term, we're, we're relying on two of its previous terms, as we can see in the formula. 
So that's why it's a little different than one we've done so far. Next, and very similar to the Fibonacci, we have the Lucas sequence. And it holds many of the similar properties to that of the Fibonacci sequence as they share the same relationship between each term. We can see this in the recursive formula below. The recursive formula is actually exactly the same. The Lucas sequence also relies on the previous two terms to calculate the next term. The only difference is that the first two terms of the Lucas sequence are one and three. And again, n has to be greater than two because we don't want a t of zero here. But is actually the exact same relationship, but just different beginning terms, which changes the sequence completely. So if we take a look at the table here on the right, um, we can see a few terms of the Lucas sequence. And in comparison to the Fibonacci sequence, we can see that we start with one and with three, and we get the next term by adding the two previous terms, just like before. So to get four, we add one and three. To get seven, three and four. We get to get 11, four plus seven. To get 18, seven plus 11, and so on, until infinity once again. And we can see that we have very, very different numbers from those of the Fibonacci because we start with two, well, with one different number because Fibonacci does have a one, but Lucas now has a three instead of a one. So we get a different sequence, but again, you can see the recursiveness, um, the recursiveness of the Lucas sequence, just like the Fibonacci, we are relying on two of the previous terms again. And that is it for this video, guys. And I know it was a shorter one than usual, but I just wanted to go over these two very important sequences that you may find on your day-to-day -day life.